my dear students will come to this class of uh, biotechnology application of biotechnology in agriculture before we go into that the why do we need it because earlier the conventional method of agriculture what we were doing conventional method of agriculture in that one of the disadvantages then chemical based agriculture chemical based agriculture after that agro farming agro farming or agro agriculture these are the three different methods conventional method very traditional method right where you are doing you have learned this in other chapters also now this is not so beneficial because because production was less in that so based on that later we move up, we moved on to chemical based agriculture there is nothing but using of chemicals in the form of pesticides pesticides and also fertilizers to increase the productivity to increase the yield we were using insecticides pesticides these insecticides and pesticides are chemicals they are toxic compounds they are harmful compounds though they used to kill the pests are the insects that damage the crops including apart from that they used to kill the pollinators also so including pollinators will be killed here so they are not so specific in the target they are generalized in their action and moreover this chemical pesticides insecticides chemical fertilizers are very costly also cost factors also more so every farmer cannot afford them right that's one of the disadvantages that Though we have increased. After that, we switch on to we move on to switch to agro farming or organic farming, right? Organic farming, okay? Organic farming. What do we mean by organic farming here? Means where everywhere, right? You use the compounds that come from nature naturally. The pesticides are from nature. Bacteria are from nature, right? Many or fertilizers are from nature natural ones they are not synthesized fertilizers right manure what the same function as the function is concerned action is concerned same manure obtained from nature the rotten rotten leaves fallen leaves right clear fertilized soil right fertilizers that are obtained from factories and companies chemicals right so manure organic farming without without including the chemicals right naturally the pesticides were natural insecticides were natural fine the manure was also natural organic farming this has increased to some extent but could not meet the demand of the could not meet the demand it could not completely bridge the gap between the production and the demand so here after all these things we moved on to we moved on to when application of agriculture or application of biotechnology in agriculture in making transgenic plants what do you mean by transgenic plants if you make if you make right the plants if you change their gene or genome this genes can be obtained from any other sources from any other sources clear if you obtain if you transfer this genes from one source to other source many different genes are added many different genes are added so these genes find right, from any other source why because genetic code is universal genetic code is universal So when we switch to transgenic plants, fine. So before they are known as GM crops, genetically modified crops, genetically modified crops. So what are the advantages in genetically modified crops? It takes very really less time to create, less time to make to make the genetically modified crop where you can alter the genome. Fine. It takes very less time. And here the production is very high. Production is very Hi, fine. This these are the advantages of GM crops. It can be asked for two months also. Then the next point: these GM crops, they are not dependent, not dependent on, not dependent on chemical fertilizers. Chemical fertilizers, no need to use chemical fertilizers because you already added the genes. Then the GM crops are naturally. Resistant to, resistant to soil variation, resistant, resistant to drought. Right? Clear. Salt, any soil variation in the soil, they maintain the balance. 
drought, dry conditions, less amount of water, these crops will sustain in that. They will maintain the water scarcity because they are genetically modified. They are genetically modified. So for maximum hazards, nature hazards or the hazards outside in the land condition, in the agricultural field, whatever the whatever the natural problems they come across, pH content, temperature problems, variations, or more water also, sometimes typhoon, more water. So all of these stresses they, they can they overcome naturally. They overcome by naturally, right? Then they are you can you can grow them very fast, very fast. Clear. You can reduce their shelf life, you can reduce their shelf life, you can reduce their height, you can reduce their height. Clear. So there are many advantages, advantages of GM crops. So because of these points, fine, Dr. Norman E. Borlaug and other genetics, fine, started making the transgenic plants. What do you mean by transgenic plants? The plants in which the genes, advantageous genes are beneficial genes have been transferred, transferred. So one classical example we can tell you, right? Here, the golden rice and GM crop, GM modified, genetically modified crop. One classical example is, right? GM rice, or golden rice. What do you mean by golden rice? What do we call as golden rice? Because golden rice. What do we call as golden rice? Because here, right? In this golden rice, what is added? Beta carotene gene is added. Beta carotene gene. Clear. This beta carotene right, produces vitamin A. What it produces? Vitamin A. So in the rice, since rice is the most stable food, I told you this point in ninth chapter also. Rice is the most stable food, largely used food. Common people also, poor people also, average people also use rice, and everyone uses rice as their food. So in the rice, they increase the quantity of vitamin A to overcome the deficiency disorder of night blindness and other things also. So vitamin A to produce vitamin A, what we should eat? Beta carotene. This is there in other crops. Fine. Clear. So but rice is very cheaply used, cheaply available. Fine. Right? Regularly used by everyone. So scientists fortified this, this rice. What do you mean fortified? You have studied biofortification in 9th chapter. Same word I am using over here. Fortified this rice and it appears golden in color because of the presence of beta carotene. To give you an example, to give you an example, fine. We use rice, right? You might have seen the covered of the rice. Okay? That is known as husk. What is known as husk? Right? Which covers the hard, right? Protein is your score. Or the, or the, the monopod of that, right? The stem of the rice. Look what in color? Yellow color, shiny, shiny, or golden color. Why? Because beta carotene is retained in that. But rice is white in color. What in color? Not only naturally white in color, but it lacks beta carotene. Because beta carotene is present in the husk, bhatta, husk, right? Clear. Or yellow, this stem also looks very shiny, golden color. Why? Because beta carotene is retained there. So animals feel on that, right? Whereas the rice itself don't have beta carotene, so this gene has been added into rice. Because of the extra addition or addition of this gene into this rice, this rice looks like when genotypically changes take place, phenotypically also changes take place. You have studied this point in genetics chapter. So when this beta carotene is added, beta carotene acts as a precursor molecule for the synthesis of vitamin A. Fine. When beta carotene is added into rice, this rice has turned into shiny, shiny color, yellow color. Hence, such a rice is what is known as golden rice. Golden rice. In our country, Avasthajan Biotechnologies first produce the golden rice to overcome these deficiency disorders. Classical example of classical example of right? <coughs> transgenic crop. Right? Now this is also one of the use advantages of transgenic crops, right? transgenic uh, plants. Now moving on to the next topic, very important topic, BT cotton. Right? You might have heard about BT cotton in the in your in the news channels, the newspapers or in some magazines or some such sites, journals, if you go through, you might have studied about BT cotton. Our farmers also will be talking about BT crops, right? So BT cotton. Now, before we go to BT cotton, right? BT cotton. Now let's talk about a little bit about cotton. You all very well know cotton is very useful, right? Very useful product, very useful commodity. Without cotton, we can't, right? Make clothes or any other material of that, right? 
So in North India, largely cotton plants are grown. So this cotton plant, the bud, which is the bud of the cotton, bud of the cotton, you know, it used to get infected with worms, worms. To kill these worms, to kill these worms, many pesticides, many vermicides, insecticides were used. The disadvantage here is when you use these chemicals to kill this worm, no doubt this worm will be killed. But it creates environmental pollutions. Environmental pollution. What do you mean by that? It used to create air pollution when you spray this in air. Air pollution is caused. When it falls, this chemical falls in the water, in the crop field, water pollution is caused. When these chemicals get deposited, it causes soil pollution. Soil pollution plus water pollution plus air pollution, collectively known as environmental pollution. Environmental pollution. This one disadvantage. Moreover, these insecticides, pesticides, as I mentioned earlier, they used to kill pollinators also. What do you mean pollinators? The insects which bring about pollination. They are useful. They are beneficial insects. We need them. Without pollination, we won't get food. Rather, right? You have studied your lower chapters. So pollinators, honeybee is a classical example of pollinator. I have told you ninth chapter also when we are talking about when we are talking about uh, apiculture. Right? So they, these chemicals were used to kill pollinators also, and they used to cause the environment pollution, and they used to cause allergic reactions in the livestock or the farmers also. So many disadvantages are there. Only one advantage they cause the, they kill the worms. So to overcome these disadvantages, what scientists, plant biotechnologists, right? The thought is to how can we overcome this problem of bullworm, cotton bullworm, the worm that used to affect the cotton is known as cotton bullworm. It used to damage the bud, used to damage the bud, used to eat the bud, damage the bud. When bud itself is damaged, you can't expect flowering, flourishing and you can't expect cotton. It is damaged at the bud itself, bud stage itself. I told you in, in previous chapter also, plants are susceptible from root to fruit at different stages of their growth. Fine, they are susceptible to different diseases, disorders. Right? and infections and also these worms. So to overcome this, fine, since cotton is a very useful commodity, right? as far as our economy is concerned, right? textile industry is concerned and many other places we use <coughs> cotton in uh, surgery also, in pharmaceuticals also, in, in medicine also, in hospital also, everywhere, in most of, in most of the places we use cotton. So to, to retain this, how to overcome this problem, what the thought is, why can't we make a transgenic plant? What plant? Transgenic plant. What do you mean by transgenic plant? Cotton plant in which genes have been added, genes have been transferred. How? By BT cotton. When the when the transgenic plant is made, it is named as BT cotton. Now question number is what do you mean by BT? BT stands for Bacillus, Bacillus, Thurin Genesis, Thurin Genesis. It's a name of a bacteria you have studied. Bacillus refers to a rod shaped bacteria. Thuringia is a place where you know, right? So, Bacillus thuringiensis is the name of the bacteria species. Thuringiensis. What is the advantage of this? This bacteria used to produce proteins. Proteins to the bacteria. But these proteins act as toxins. Hence, they are referred as protoxins. What they are referred as? Protoxins, protoxins. What do you mean by that? They are primarily they are proteins, basically they are proteins, but later they act as toxins. So protoxins. Right? They are also known as endotoxins. I will like to tell you why they are as endotoxins, but now you remember. Right? The proteins which are produced by bacteria acts as a toxin to this cotton bullworm. Cotton bullworm. Now here try to understand. Our target is to kill an animal that is nothing but bullworm. Through Plant, kingdom, plantae is involved, kingdom, animalia is involved, kingdom, monera is involved, bacillus is there, bacteria, so the whole, whole living systems are involved. This is a proof that genetic code is universal. From bacteria, you are obtaining a gene, you are adding into, incorporating into a plant to kill an animal worm. So here, this gene is present in, this gene is obtained, the gene that produces this protein is taken from this bacteria, they are known as tri genes. Tri, what do you mean by tri here? Here, tri stands for crystal protein because these proteins are crystallized, they can be crystallized, so they are known as crystal proteins. 
crystal proteins. The gene that produces these crystal proteins is referred as cry gene. It can be asked also. Try to remember cry genes. Crystal protein genes, cry genes. Again, it has two parts in that, two elements rather. You can study when you talk about transposons, you will understand that. If you have a doubt, contact me, I will clear you about transposons, chaining of positions. Fine. We talk about elements there. So cry, cry 1 AC. Cry to AB. They are specific elements. They are the parts of this gene. Parts of this gene. Try to remember. Cry genes. What are cry genes? They are genes present in the vascular syringes. They produce proteins. These are the proteins for the bacteria. But these proteins act as a toxins. How it is possible? For example, my saliva is not allergic to me, not toxic to me. But my saliva is allergic to others. Right? Insects. When small insect is there, you spit your saliva on that, it, it, it dies or some reaction, some problems occur. Why? Because toxic chemicals are there, proteins are there. So, the similarly, the one concept I am putting in your mind. So, here, these proteins are useful to bacteria, but it starts into other animal, like worm. So, this was been, this was been first find out, discovered that these bacteria have genes, which produce crystal proteins, cry genes. These genes taken from bacillus from bacillus thuringiasis. Since this gene is from bacillus thuringiasis Bt and this gene is incorporated into cotton plant. Incorporated into cotton plant. Such a cotton plant is referred as what? Yes, what is it? Bt cotton. Bt cotton. Here Bt stands for bacillus thuringiasis. First transgenic plant to be discussed in your chapter as, as far as your well as chapter is Bt cotton. Later you have many Bt brinjal. Bt cabbage, flavor savor tomato, all those things, we will talk about that. So from here, from the massive thuringiasis, this gene is taken. This gene has two parts, cry 1 AC, cry, cry 2 AB, they are specific in their action, right? They kill cotton bullworms, right? Borers, right? Maize worm, right? Others, because these are the genes which, 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 which kills the insects, which kill the insects. In, in arthropoda, you might have studied in the first year, class insecta has four. Four orders here: Lepidoptera, Diptheria, Cynoptera, all those things. Hymenoptera, but Hymenoptera many beneficial insects belong to. Then in uh, Diptheria, fine mosquitoes and other bees. Lepidoptera, these worms, fine. So these worms are harmful. So such insects are killed by this gene. Killed by this gene. Now this gene is taken from Bacillus thuringiensis by plant tissue culture, transgenic by transgenic methods, techniques. This gene is taken, right? This gene is introduced into the plants. How introduced? Not a common plant is there, you are injecting. No, not like that. Fine. The taken plant is taken, the uh, plant is taken, X plant is taken. In that, this gene is incorporated through biotechnological experiments. Fine. This gene is first purified, isolated from DNA. Then so much of so many experiments are involved. Practically, a lot of difficulties are there. It's very easy to understand theoretically. So this gene is incorporated into plant through through plant tissue culture, such plants are known as transgenic plants. These plants are tested in various conditions, in land conditions. Now, you see that, for example, this is cotton leaf, example, example, okay? Cotton leaf, for example, right? When before bud formation, when these insects, which insects, cotton bullworm, when it used to feed on this cotton, cotton leaf, cotton leaf, it used to feed on, right? This bullworm. This worm when it feeds, now this gene is present where? It is present in the plant. Now what is the function of this gene? To produce proteins. Fine. These proteins are released. What are these crystal toxins, endotoxins? When this worm used to feed on cotton leaf, cotton leaf, fine. These toxins enter into, enter into the, enter into the worm, fine. Enter into the worm. And that's why they used to kill the worm. Hence there was endotoxins. Why? Because inside the gut region or inside the body of the worm they used to show function. Now, question or doubt will come. Why are these stocks and proteins are not functional here in the plant? Because these stocks, they are the proteins. These proteins will get converted to toxins at a different pH level. Different pH level. They are proteins, but at higher pH, alkaline pH, alkaline pH or pH 12. At pH 12, these proteins are converted into toxins. Now, how to, how to believe this? For example, just to putting putting one concept in your minds, that is, the poison produced by snake is not poison. It's a digestive enzyme, digestive juice like our saliva and HCL, digestive juice. But when the snake bites, 
when that venom, what so called venom, what we that enters into the blood, when it mixes with human blood, biochemical reactions takes place, then only it becomes what? Toxin, it becomes poison, it becomes venom. Similarly, here, so when different chemical reactions takes place, this gene is present here, these proteins are present here, but they are not toxin to plant, they are not toxin to the bacteria also, they are not harmful to plants also. When it enters into the, when, it, when the bullworm feeds on the leaf, feeds on the leaf, so when it enters into gut region, gut region, in the gut region the pH value is 12, very high, alkaline pH value. In that alkaline pH value, the inactivated toxins, inactivated toxin or proteins get activated, right? They become active, they become activated toxins. So when they become toxins, they, they block the, they, they infect the epithelial cells, you know, epithelial cells are present in animals, find the gut region, they enter the epithelial cells, their toxins are produced, epithelial cells will swell up, right? Swelling takes place, inflammation takes place, they block the gut region, they block the gut region. When the gut region is blocked, fine, the respiratory system, the nervous system will be blocked and this insect will die over there itself. So this is the gene which is present in proteins, in bacteria, right? Incorporated into plants to kill the worm. How specifically it acts? Because it's very specific in its action. It is not killing other insects, it is not killing other pests or other useful insects. When this cotton bullworm feeds on the leaf of the cotton plant, leaf of the cotton plant, it enters into the gut region of the cotton plant, enters into the gut region, there it enters into the epithelial cells, inflammation takes place, blockage or blockage in the gut region, thereby results in killing of the insects. Thus, before bud formation takes place, these insects are getting killed here, thereby these buds and cotton is very safe. Such a plant, such a cryogenic plant is what is known as Bt cotton, fine Bt cotton, I hope you have understood. Clear? Go through the study material, watch my class repeatedly. If you have any doubts, get back to me on my personal account on WhatsApp. Keep studying. God bless you. Good luck. Take care.